Uh -huh. Okay. So intonation is making sure that the note is the right pitch all the way along, right? So yeah. that at, at each fret you you've got exactly the right pitch. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, I've whenever I've done that because I have done that on a few guitars. I've always used a fancy strobe tuner. Yeah. It's possible to do it with a regular normal tuner as well? Uh, yeah, um, what we can do... Um... I actually have a little clip-on strobe tuner thing. I don't know if you've used these ones before. Have you used these polytune things? They've got a... a I'll probably start just doing it. Yeah. It actually, it's got a strobe type thing on it. Yeah. And you can check it. So let's tell the people out there in internet land how you check your intonation then first of all. So how can they check whether their intonation is good or not? Well, kind of what you're looking for is um, the start point is that the guitar's in tune and you play the harmonic at the 12th fret and then the fretted note at the 12th fret. And you want and them should to be, be the as same. near the same as possible. Mm -hmm. There's some things that kick in as, you know, that will have a, an impact on that. Mm -hmm. If we've done, you know, the, the one, two, three adjustments that we've done, then it shouldn't be the setup of, of the guitar. If the strings are old, it will definitely have an impact on it. You always want to do it with new strings. strings. Okay. And the, the thing that is a bit of a curveball that people don't realise has an impact on it is the actual height of the pickups can really screw the intonation. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> on Fender style pickups, um, originally the pole pieces, these pieces mm -hmm. here, were magnets and thereby they Pulling produced the a very kind of direct and beam like magnetic mm -hmm. uh, window for the string. And if you have that too close, then you can see a funny vibration in the string as you play uh -huh. it. It's particularly noticeable further up the neck, um, particularly if it's a, a vintage or vintage replica style Fender pickup. On the G, you'll see it because that pole piece tends to be quite high. Uh -huh. um, and on the bass side, you'll see it because there's more more metal in the string, the more metal there is in the string, the more it gets disturbed, mm -hmm. more it disturbs and gets disturbed by yep. the magnetic field. So, and that creates a false kind of harmonic. So kind of quite, we quite often see is, you know, the low E and sometimes the A wound right forward. Uh -huh. And that, just if you ever see so you that. See what, what we're talking about. So what we're talking about now is the, the health, is, is the, yeah, this this is broadly, of each of those things. Yeah, this is broadly correct. That you know they should go from the high E. It should step back one, two, three to the G. Yeah. Which is one, two, three plain strings. Then the wound strings sit in front. Uh -huh. So the from the G to the D, it Be steps forward, forward again. Yeah. and then similarly it comes back. Going backwards again to the E. And one of the things that I think Fender on their bass. Uh, one of their base setup things. They say that you set, you can set the saddle so that the diameter of the string, you know, you set the G to the D. You'll put the diameter of the G string at the G saddle, and then have the D coming to that. So hmm. the thickness of that string is the amount of distance that one goes back. Wow. And you know, if you want to kind of uh, do a, a rough kind of you know non measured set you could do that you could do that with the six uh -huh. one as well but i guess you've got to know where this one goes in the first place uh -huh. and <clears throat> the scale length being such as it is it's you know it's that length there again and then typically on the high e plus a millimeter uh -huh. millimeter and a half a little bit you know plus a little mm. bit but more on the base in the bass side. Does that affect where you would play your natural harmonics? Because I've always thought of it as exactly over the 12th fret, but it's not quite going to be exactly over the 12th fret, is it? On well, a, I guess it has in to be, terms of... Well, like we're just talking fractions of millimetres. Yeah, it's fractions, fret. isn't it? Yeah. So, 
Uh -huh. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to explore that in my own time. I won't waste the good people's time uh, on, on this silliness. But okay, so now you're playing the, the, the harmonic at the 12th fret and then playing the E note. And how, how close is it? I'm sure we can, I can show them what you can see there. So there's the harmonic. Get the harmonic perfectly in tune first so that the little line to hopefully yeah, and you'll moving find, as little you'll as possible. What you find is if you do it in playing position or flat, it'll tend it's to be different. slightly different. Uh -huh. And if you've got your hand on the, the actual tuner, it'll tend oh, to be different okay. as well because you put a bit of tension. Okay, that's... So it's moving a so little bit. So the note bit. is coming up sharp. You have to be careful here with how high, hard you press too, right? If you press too hard, then you... Yeah, and how high the action is then dictates how much you deflect the pitch. So there's a whole bunch hmm. of things. And that's why, in lots of ways, it's worth learning how to do the intonation yourself. Because you're the one who's playing the guitar, not whoever you ask to. Uh-huh. Now, screwing the, the screw... The back. Okay, so, so that's anti-clockwise or clockwise? Uh, Clockwise, because it wants to screw it oh, yeah, into yeah, there okay. and pulls it back. Uh -huh. Come on. Oh. So I can say. I think in terms of <laughs> what we're going to be playing on this guitar, I think that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I think we could go, you know, you could go further. Uh-huh. Um, so what I, what I would tend to do as well, what I often do, is I do the high E, the low E and the G to start with and yeah. then rough the others in and then, mm -hmm. then fine tune them in. Okay. with strobe tuners isn't it? Trying to get them exactly balanced is pretty difficult. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Turn this off here. Yeah. Do you still use a VS2, the Peterson at the workshop? Uh yeah, I've actually got one of the old, an actual strobe one. Ah. Uh -huh. One of the rack mount ones that I use. A Peterson? Yeah. yeah. That's really good, actually. Yeah. I used the big VS2 for a long, long time as my main tuner, but yeah. then when they brought out the app version and it was just as accurate, it was like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll use the one on my phone. But I most, most commonly use these little clip-on yeah, yeah. Now because they're yeah. dead easy. What no. was the result with that? Uh, same I as I wasn't paying I attention. Really, the, <laughs> okay. the string is slightly sharp when it's fretted. Uh -huh. So I'm going to use probability and I'm winding them all back slightly. Uh -huh. So now they've all gone sharp. And with on just a note on tuning, yeah. it's always worth um, tuning down below the note then tuning, and then tuning back up. Mm -hmm. Particularly with inexpensive guitars, the, the more expensive the tuners, you could argue the less that applies, but I think it still does apply. But certainly with inexpensive tuners, it's always worth going uh -huh. below. And, and the other thing, if you put fresh strings on, you must always give them yeah, a stretch give them too. A bit stretchy. Yeah. And further to all that is, again, if it's not a, if it's a new guitar, hopefully it wouldn't apply. But if it's certainly if it's a second-hand guitar, you might want to check that everything is tight and firm. Uh -huh. Because if these are moving around as well, then yeah, yeah. you're you, a bit lost. Yeah, come in yeah. that way. You know. Mm 
remember changing the tuners on my uh, my first electric guitar was an Aria Pro 2 Stagecaster, quite a fine little guitar it was too, And uh, but I snapped one of the tuners, yeah. bumped it on something and uh, so I replaced the whole set and I bought some, I can't remember whether they were Grover or Pop Red, they were, I remember they were quite expensive and I remember being overjoyed at how much nicer they were as a movement and how more in tune I could get the guitar. Still not playing nicely. Bit sharp still. Bit sharp, so you're turning it clockwise, which will bring it back further. Just in yeah. case there, are we any effect? Because that last adjustment didn't really do anything. So. Uh -huh. I get it. So, yeah, drop the pickups down because it didn't show that, that making that movement had done anything. So yeah. that means something else might be playing. Yeah, just in case. It doesn't. It, Oh, are you using the stroke one or are you using another yeah, one? Yeah, no, I'm using both. Uh huh. Hmm. It's the battery on that. Yeah, it must be. Yeah. I have about five or six of those tuners and I've got no idea where they've all gone. Yeah, I've got about two or three of those, and that's the only one yeah. I find. <laughs> it's the sock monster. He's, he's getting yeah, adventurous yes, instead yeah. of just the pixies. Yeah. He's after the tuner now. Yeah, that one's definitely the batteries. It's oh, all right. I can, yeah. I can use that yeah. one. That's fine. So they're all coming back quite a ways. Yeah. Are you loosening it off there sometimes before you screw yeah, them back? Yeah, if I'm if I'm taking them back, you know, more than you know, half a turn, I'm loosening. Uh -huh.
it's sounding better as well, acoustically. Yeah. Behaving? Yeah. Nah, it doesn't. Nearly. Nearly? You're right back at the end of it, nearly. Uh, yeah, the spring is starting to compress a bit now. Uh -huh. How much of a difference is the intonation going to make for people playing open chords? Is it just as noticeable? Doing, yeah, what we're doing now is not going to make a huge. I think we're we're, we're easily near enough now. Uh -huh. Does it affect though more playing further up the neck, or does it, it does it affect it equally around the fretboard? Uh, yeah, you're probably going to notice it further up the neck, particularly if you're playing you know, chords. Uh -huh chords that have got you know three notes high up and some and open string and string yeah. stuff. Uh -huh. There's something in there that's huh? something in there that's going off a bit isn't there? There's a funny resonance in there, but... Yeah, well... Give me a look. How's it... How's it feel? Oh, wow! That's amazingly different. Oh, wow, I can even do, fret it with the F. Oh, Charlie, that's it amazing. Come, it will come down more there as well, I think. But that's, I mean, that's that's playing as nicely as my really expensive guitars. I mean, the, the neck's a bit fat, but the yeah. the action, the feel of it is... Wow. That's, yeah, that's remarkable. <laughs> Why are you, yeah. you know, kind of design, uh -huh. designing something that, you know, is it kind of a, a kit, really, that... Mm -hmm. A kit then if you spend a bit of time on things as assuming certain things at, at the outset that it's not the wood isn't complete crap uh -huh. you know, 